Okay, so this is the representation that I gave you last week. It's mainly a representation of the form. And so, so what we have is that the function, remember, this has to be in the form A of X1, the Y. Okay. So in any case, yeah. So so this must be in the original. So your your a function, the your a function is it must be minus alpha one minus omega. Omega plus one, right? This is your a function, right? So let me write normally one minus alpha omega, one minus omega. Right now, we need to check whether this function satisfies the four functions. The four functions that we need to check are the number one, so this probably one. That a of zero must be one, and number two is that a of one must be one, and number three is that this is 
right? Okay. Right, and this is this to check this condition, we can get two different parts. And of course, that a of omega is less than equal to one for all omega. And then the, the certain is that a of omega is greater than equal to omega for all omega. Third condition is that A and omega is greater than equal to one minus omega for all omega. Right? Finally, condition number four is that A is convex. Right, so we need to check all these guys, right? We need to check all, all these conditions, right? Let's start with the first one. You guys with me? I can't hear you. Um, all right. So let's check, let's start with condition one. So A and zero is one minus alpha times zero times one minus zero. Right, which is still equal to one. Right, so, so this condition is satisfied. Part two, A of one is one minus alpha times one times one minus one, which is something equal to one. So condition two is satisfied. Now to check condition three, we need to check we need to check each of these functions, alpha, beta, gamma. So let's start with alpha. It says that a of omega must be less than or equal to one for all omega, right? Which implies that one minus alpha omega times one minus omega is less than or equal to one for all omega, right? So, and this is the same as saying that minus alpha omega, one minus omega is less than zero for all omega. And this is true. This is true because alpha is a positive number. All the question that you say that alpha is positive, omega is positive, omega is also like between zero and one. So this statement is true. Okay, guys. Uh, now, beta, function beta is that we need to check whether this is the case. Yeah? So that means 1 minus, one minus alpha omega, 1 minus omega, this one is equal to omega, so all omega, right? So this is the same as saying that 1 minus Omega plus alpha and this is the same as saying that one minus omega times one minus alpha omega and this is true because this guy is is uh, non negative. Right, and we have to assume that alpha is less than one. This is also one negative if alpha is less than one, and we have to assume we have to assume that alpha is less than one, right, and greater than zero. So although the question doesn't say that, we need to assume that, right? Okay, so that's um, and gamma. One of the one times the times.
tensor out of the many graphs. Because there's a negative sign, you need to change the sign. This is this is true. This is true because because this is not a, this is a number between zero and one, right? From zero to one, and this is also a number between zero to one, right? So therefore, this statement must be true. Right? Okay, guys. Now finally, so we have done so. Function number four is to check whether A is a convex function. And I told you, I told you how to check that the function is convex or not. What you do is you, you first of all you take the first derivative. The first derivative is minus alpha. Plus The second derivative, the second derivative is two algorithm. Right? So it's a so condition for a sense like two. So hence the conclusion is that hence Right. So this completes the first part of the remaining parts are trivial. I'll just show you how to what functions to use. So it's only the first part of this to can be non trivial for you. So include the remaining parts of question two. So part B, part B is to find the joint C there to the G. Of x comma y, right? Yeah, and you may recall um, this is a formula I gave you a long time ago. I mean, not long. I mean, it may be long time to use. But this is one of the formulas I gave you some time ago, right? That it's the relationship between the joint sigma and the joint survival function. If you look back, right? So. So we know that this guy is exponential, and this, this is also exponential, and this is given in the question. This is plus uh, e alpha x y divided by plus y minus x y. So that's part B. Part C. Part C is to find the function of the period for y. Of y, q, and x. So to do that, you just condition the there. So you just divide the p of x comma y by the density function of x, which is this. Right? This is not the same. Part d is the same thing. So you divide by the p of y, which is this. And part e. Is the joint PDF. To find the joint PDF, you just do a double partial derivative of the joint CD, right? And part F is the function of PDF for Y given X, so it's gonna be, gonna be, let me call this little bit, okay, let me call this little bit. Well, so it's going to be the, the functional, uh, sorry, the joint PDF divided by this. Right? And part, that's F, G. Part G, the final part, is the functional 
on y. So this is going to be this. So it's it just a matter of using this formula. So there's nothing. It's just routine, right? I'm sure you guys can do this, right? All right. Any questions on this? I mean, you guys okay? Do you have any questions? Guys, so you can. And you do the next question, please. It's question three on the economic shift. So question three is this, this guy here. So you should find the issue is G, not F. That's the next question. Or this issue is G. G bar, not F bar. All right, so the G bar is given by this, and the questions are the same. So the questions are the same. Yes, this is the fact that 
So once again, we put the y equal to zero, should put y equal to zero here, we get zero minus x, and we should put x equal to zero, we get zero minus y, and both these are in exponential modules. Right now, this you have you can write it as e bar of x comma y times e of minus x plus y. Practice we have Thank 
And this is good equal to something of this form. Yeah. Uh, if uh, if what a omega is equal to one minus omega to the power a. Plus omega power a. Right, so this is the function for ax omega. Now let's check the four function. The first function is ax0. ax0 is 1 minus 0 power a plus 0 power a, 0 power this, and this is still equal to 1. Okay, so Function, function one six by function two a one which is one minus one power a plus one to the power a and this is also equal to one okay and then function three okay in order to check function three you need to check alpha beta gamma alpha is that if omega is less than equal to one, right, for all omega, which is the same as same as this, yeah. Same as saying that this is the same thing. This. Now, this is true because W is a number between zero and one. So, and if you assume A is greater than one, if A is greater than one, then Then power A will be less than equal to 1. And uh, 1 minus W to the power A will also be less than equal to 2. So it will be less than equal to 1 minus the omega. 1 minus the omega. But if we assume that both A is greater than 1, which is the bundle of this assumption, and both W is a number between 0 and 1, and therefore we should power that to a number that is greater than 1 as the less than equal to this, the same here. But you should sum these two, you should sum these two as W equal A plus 1 minus W equal A. It's less than equal to omega plus 1 minus omega. So, so this function. Is satisfied. Is that okay? Right now, beta that's alpha. The beta, you do the beta part. Okay, it is the same as saying that. And if you take the power of both sides, uh, this will become okay, and now uh, these two guys cancel out, so this becomes.
and this is clearly true because because one minus omega is a number between zero and one, and a is a number greater than one. So this is true for all of them. Now let's enter now gamma. Same as saying that. Uh, and this is the same as saying that okay. all right now these two guys cancel out so what we have is now we can call omega whether it is zero or all of that So all of all three are satisfied. Okay, the final condition is to check that whether A is convex or not, right? Now, okay, let me write down one more time that A of omega this is this is your now to check whether this is convex or not, you need to take the second order derivative. Right, so let's see. So the first order derivative is you should do the math, correct me if I'm wrong. And this simplifies to the A, the A cancels, so it becomes. Uh, yes. So this is the first order derivative. Correct. The second order derivative. Yes, we need to use the product rule right, to do the second order derivative. So let's see how we can do this. Um, Times A. Yeah. And then plus um So this is what we get. Now we need to simplify this. And I'm, I'm not, I don't think I have maybe run out of time. So but let me show you after some simplification, this is what you would get. I'm sure you guys know how to do this. Okay. 
Application, algorithm simplification, and do it that the following two days. Get my one times. And this right multiplied by in brackets uh, right right then plus So this is what we look at. Right now, you will see that A is a we are assuming that A is greater than one. So this guy here is, is positive, and this guy is obviously positive, right? Because because omega and one minus omega are between zero and one. And this one has to be non-negative because we have a square. You remember anything squared is has to be non-negative. And this is this guy here is positive, and this guy here is also positive. So hence, hence the Economic variable must be positive for all omega. So, hence, we have proved that A is a convex function, right? And hence, we have shown that all conditions are satisfied and that hence T bar corresponds to, to uh, our value. So you value this question, right? Okay, so that's the that's the first part of question three. The remaining parts are similar to the previous question that I gave, right? Are you guys okay with this? So you need that to set the application pack and set the number of manipulations so that. You can show that that it is possible for all omega, right? Any questions from the Zoom guys? Are you guys okay? So as I said, next week. Uh, next week, we will have a revision session on Wednesday from 10 to 11. And we also have the in class test. I sent I sent you guys a reminder uh, this morning about the in class test. The in class test will begin at 1 p.m. UK time on Thursday, 16th of December, and it will finish. On 1 p.m. UK time on Saturday. So I'm be surprised. So you have 24 hours to complete the new class test and upload that. So if you have no excuse for 24 hours, it's plenty of time for you to complete that. So uh, by the way, there, there will be no tutorial next week. So because of the test, I don't have it. So I forgot to mention. I will mention it in my email as well. That will be now. That will be on tutorial on Friday. But uh, as you see, we have a class that is complete by one p.m. Friday. Okay. So so please. Uh, but you will have a class 
Sanskrit on Wednesday, which is about this post editing Please bring the coaching. Of course, you can also email me or Skype me or Zoom or so to ask as many questions as you like. But, and uh, I will see the exam day, but uh, as soon as I will see the day, time tomorrow day. As soon as I get to know exactly time on the contact, and then it was a very important that you can do any question to the best that I'm thinking around. Okay, I'll take a note and see you guys on Wednesday. Take care of yourself.